just at the cottage, taking apart every bag, trying to get three bags of food into two. Super excited to go on a trip though. Cheers. In 2023, we decided to only trip in Northern Algonquin. Our summer adventure was a week long loop out of Cedar Lake. Why don't you come along for the ride? So we're gonna stop at the permit office. Old Rich has to see a man about a horse. It's been a long time. I think it was 2016 the last time I was up here. I thought you meant it was a long time since I saw a man about a horse. <laughs> <laughs> The old Brent office. Yeah, she's full. I don't know, you can get in there. Okay, so we walked all the way down to the store. It appeared to be closed. It is pretty early. We are walking the railway, um, and we thought we would be getting to the boxcar, but I think we needed to go further. I guess that'd be east on the railway. So we did not see the boxcar, and we are on our way back right now to the put-in, trying to find Ryan and Rich, and then we... I'm right here, bud. Ryan and Eric. There's a lot of people at the put-in currently. It's the parking lot's full. And there's one group that we met. His name is Paul. Yep. Paul. Nice to meet you, Paul. Uh, they're also going to catfish tonight. There was a couple boats crossing to the portage. So um, if we're hoping to get Shangri-La, we gotta put some miles on and single carry everything today and try and get ahead of everybody. You excited, Rich? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm not excited about uh, Unicorn Hill today, I'll tell you that, because we have so much food that we had to unpack and repack it six times. You're a big fan um, of portaging, Rich. I'm, I'm never a fan of portaging. In fact, I don't even know why I come on these trips, to be honest with you. So we're ready to head out. It's probably 9.30ish. We did a walk down to the store, took a bit of time, and Cedar Lake is behaving today. It looks gorgeous out there. Uh, we're just crossing straight over into the portage, into the Petawawa, and uh, we're very excited. Everyone's in pretty good mood. Morale's high. It's going to be a good trip. Cedar Lake is beautiful today. Not much of a breeze on such a big lake. And that's looking up into the north arm. And we've had some wicked paddles in that direction take you up into the Koshan Lakes. But we are headed in this direction to the first portage of the trip. Start seeing some waterfalls, make our way to Unicorn Hill, pay the piper. And we should have, we should be arriving catfish mid afternoon. I don't think we've mentioned yet, but my brother Eric's in the front of the boat. We'll get some B-roll of you later. So we actually got stopped by Park Wardens right in the middle there of cedar permit check nice guys gave us some fishing advice on catfish we are approaching the first portage and you'd swear it was a campsite there is a lot of people here boats and dinghies and bags and hopefully this is not what to expect the rest of the trip that is a yard sale of gear try the boat on this one if you want because I don't think I can do it on the unicorn. We're probably gonna hybrid carry the unicorn. Yeah. What a heck of a way to start a trip. Warden talks to you within 20 minutes and there had to have been 
30 people at the put in. It almost looked like they were camping. Two or three other groups, boats everywhere. Anyway, we made it onto our portage, quick single carry, and hopefully we'll start putting some miles behind people. Start to feel some solitude, you know? Holy, first portage and you're already under the oak. So this is the end of the cedar uh, portage. So first portage in the books. This was by far the busiest portage I've ever been on. Earlier when we got here, the parking lot was absolutely jammed. So we expect to be a bit busy. But like I said, I've never pulled into a portage where there were that many boats and there were almost as many people on the trail. So it's good to have that one out of the way. Uh, one or two more and we should start getting out of the crowds, but beautiful day. I'm already soaked in sweat from that and uh, now we're off onto this little marshy area. I love these little areas. With the grass, with the lilies, especially when the sun's sparkling off the water. Gives a whole different feel when it's pouring rain. Got our annual trip passenger. Oh, he left. Scared him away. We had a dragonfly for a minute. He buzzed off. Bazinga! That was a real zinger, right, guy? That's going in the bloops. So there's the takeout for the 300. Uh, you're going up and over. Eric and I are gonna slowly waggle our way up as far as we can just to get a better look at that sweet waterfall. It's probably a little taller than the one we just passed on the 600. I don't know if you could see in the distance there, but there's a good amount of water coming down that falls. And we'll try and portage the top and Take a look at it. There's a big rock here that we don't want to hit too hard. It's right dead ahead of us. Right there. Got it. Found it. Got the old stopping rock? Yep. Nice jagged one. What doesn't kill the boat makes it stronger, Rich. I don't know if that's the saying, but. Eh, heard it. I read it once in a book. <laughs> Thunderbirded right into that tree. Too busy thunderbirding. Not too far from the top of this portage, you can see that high falls area I was talking about. And from here, it's uh, astonishing how powerful it is. You can barely probably hear me over the sound of it, I imagine. Just like being at Niagara Falls, but the meals are cheaper. Still lots and lots of people in the park at this point. Uh, we're trying to make as quick work as possible. Uh, there's campsites at the end of these portages, which really backs things up. Uh, just means a lot of stuff in the way. Here comes the old Eric. Yeah, it's not, it's like two seconds. Fun, everyone. How bad's that food bag? Uh, it's about average for your first day. Yeah, I guess because we have way more food, but it's split between. All the bags. All the bags. So yeah, it's probably. I guess it can only really, really hold so much. Eh? Yeah. We need to enjoy this when you get to the site. Oh, 
in the sun now, Eric, so we're getting a couple days of rain. All right, so we're on the Petawawa River again. We passed another group on the last portage, the 300. And we're about to waggle into the narrow part of the river right before the 2.345 portage up and over Unicorn Hill. So yeah, this portage is gonna be a bit of a backbreaker, but once it's over, that's the worst of today done. Blue bag boat. We're gonna do our trip out there. What do you want to do? Um, you're the one who's done this before, yeah, so doesn't matter to me. What do you say? Huh? For the record, Evan on every portage will be carrying the lightest thing there is, which is his boat. He's gonna watch this and be like, "Ooh, I carry so much! You should see my bag. I carry all the communal gear. Rich carrying nothing." Love you, bud. Hey, guys. Think we can slide right up in there? All right, so this is the face of a man about to single carry Unicorn Hill. I've done it twice before, but I'll be a little more tired next time you see this face. And Eric, he seems to think we're gonna single carry to the top without issue, but he hasn't done it before. We'll see. I hope he does. All right, so made it to the top of the hill. Eric uh, put the boat down not too far back, maybe I don't know, 300, 350 meters, because uh, he had the, the steepest section to go. But he should be here momentarily. Uh, I don't know if the guys are going to be double carrying it up to the top of the hill or not, but I'll wait here at least for Eric, and then I'll take the boat the rest of the way. It's like, uh, I don't know, kilometer, kilometer and a bit, but it's fairly downhill from here, so. Ryan and I are just stopped for a little bit of a break. Evan said there's still a ways to go, but we've done a bunch of uphill steps so far, but it's definitely rough. Uh, you're just, seems like you're just slowly climbing an escalator forever. You know why they call it Unicorn Hill? Because it only has one hill? No. Ryan, why is it called Unicorn Hill? Unicorn Hill is shaped like this at the top end, and then the bottom end is just like this. So you get the one long horn of plateauing, and then you get to this hill, which is all the way up there. Here we go. Now we know why it's a Unicorn Hill. Well, that's why I'm calling it Unicorn Hill, at least. Oh, wait. Told you. Steepest bits at the end, eh? <laughs> you did it. Did you hear any huffing and puffing behind you? No canoe rest now, right? No canoe rest. No, nope, just a bench. Well, that's unfortunate. How was that, Richard? I had better. I noticed you don't have a boat. It's actually not that far away. How was that, Eric? Uh -huh. Last trip wasn't too bad. Bugs are terrible. Right? Yeah. I turned around and my whole shoulder was just covered. So splash. How was that, Rich? Can't have a unicorn hill without an Algonquin unicorn. What'd you, Ryan put the boat down and you pick it up right at the end there? At the, where were we stopped in the middle? Oh, Ryan, give me a hand with this. Oh, wow, that feels nice. We are all finished up unicorn hill. I'm happy to see that behind us because it means only short portages and paddling for the rest of the day. And it pretty much cuts down. I think I'm gonna say we have three long portages on this trip. Don't quote me on that, but I think three long ones. So it means 33% done the long portages. Obviously everyone has a different interpretation of that. But for me, 800 meters or less is something that I feel like is not too bad. It's a get out of the boat and stretch your legs. But once you get over that, it really starts to kill me. 
Ryan grabbed the boat and did all the hill part, so you gotta give him a thank you for that because I might have died. There's a couple groups behind us. They're doing really well also. They're just getting to the portage, end of the portage the same time as us, so haven't cleared away from the traffic yet, but we're doing our best. Narrow bag lake. Second last lake of the day. Tiny little 80 meter portage that Ryan and I camped on on one windbound day back in the day. Short work of this lake, 80 meter portage. On to catfish. Hey, I caught one. Evan snagging fish. <laughs> little tiny. <laughs> that is the Cisco. Cisco's. Thong, 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 thong. We're done the last portage of the day, Eric. What are your thoughts? That was too easy. Yeah, that was easy. You making it a 10 hour trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we still got to paddle all catfish. This is the top end of the 80. I'll get some video, but you can see the log shoot remnants here. And we're just going to have some lunch. And then we're on to catfish. We're just coming through a narrow uh, which I believe is going to lead us into the larger body of catfish. But there's a pretty cool little rock formation here that I liked. And uh, with the sun glistening, it looks probably even better. I love this lake, Eric. Why? Fond memories. A couple good trips through here. It's my, my fourth time being a catfish. It's a nice lake. So one thing we haven't talked about, or I don't think we've talked about, yeah. is that it is roasting hot today. Not much breeze. A few big white fluffy clouds in the sky that give you a break every now and then, but the sun is beating down. I think it said it was supposed to be 26 today, if I remember correctly, but definitely warm. I'm about to do the first next scarf water dip of the trip. This definitely cools you down. Feels brutal for a second. But refreshing. So we're just in the north end of Catfish Lake and you can't quite tell, uh, but there's a campsite there on the point. This is actually an island and this little island right here, we'll just find a nice spot to land, but that is where the alligator remains are. So you can't miss it. We're headed to the south end of Catfish, but this little island, it's worth checking out. I haven't been here in eight years, seven, eight years. I'm assuming most of it is still there, just a little more rusted. Yeah, very similar shape to what was here last time I was here. So this Eric would be, it would have been a big winch to pull the log booms and you would have had the, the steam powered wheels. See this plate? And how it has a rounded off bolt here. Yeah. There's a plate, I'll try and find it over here. But there's a plate over like this way. And the the bolt is still straight up and down. It was in here somewhere. Right there. That's what went through his foot. That's it right there. Shit. I don't know if you can see. That's what went right through Gregor's foot. Yeah. Hey guys, we're uh, still on the north. <laughs> so we're making a video oh, of the alligator and Greg is bleeding profusely now from his foot because there is a nail spike standing up. I need to uh, go patch up old Gregor there. So that uh, takes precedent at this point. Hopefully he doesn't get uh, tetanus or anything from the nail. Probably shouldn't have told him that he could get it. Um, anyway, I'll go take care of Greg. Bye for now. 
Yeah, we walk like right through here and he just stepped right down on that. Crazy. Bottom end of catfish. We are right beside what is called Turtle Rock. I think it has deeper significance to the indigenous community. Kind of looks like a turtle shell. And the wardens told me to troll right here. So we'll see if I get anything. Kind of looks like a turtle. And that, good sirs, Shangri-La Island. Didn't even have to swing Shangri-La Island. We saw somebody walking around on it. So we are swinging back around to the elevated rocky campsite just north of Shangri-La. Looked pretty cool. In case you missed it, that was his, the Shangri-La site is taken symbol, uh, but he didn't need to use it, so I guess he wanted to give it a shot now. Ooh, I think these are called rose hips or something. Don't quote me on that, I would not eat those. If we can get some hammocks up here, I'm feeling like I'm gonna really like this spot because I love a high elevation. Ooh, fire pit built into a nice rock. High elevated view. Probably kind of hard to see what that is, but it's skewers of shaved beef and some twice baked potatoes that are garlic and butter and cheese and bacon so hopefully be pretty good all right so this is our dinner as it's cooked that's my uh, twice baked potato there try and see some of Ryan's here he's done nothing to his yet I don't know you got some twig in there now but other than that Twice baked, nice. a little bit of beef in there. Evans is done. He already finished his up. Half done. Oh, what? That was good. It was a good meal. Oh, you just want your face in it. Yeah. I thought you. Yeah, I thought my lens was broken or something. <laughs> hey, look at that good-looking guy. Whew. Camping just got a lot better now that I knew I could do that. <laughs> look at that, Eric. Ooh, beautiful. Hey. <laughs> good work. How you doing? you didn't bring up meals we had to drink dirty old water for four days was that even recording i don't know <laughs> i didn't turn it on i thought you turned it on oh, why would i turn it on oh my god the south camera why would that? i turn the camera you i thought you turned it on you gave it to me you're like take some b-roll i thought you see ya <laughs> we're gonna take it off of youtube <laughs> <laughs> is that what we calling it 
Oh, portage. portage. You want some porridge with your portage? I should have worn a new hat because now that I'm bald, my hat's a bit stretched out and it just doesn't fit quite right. Yeah, I hate getting bald. It's not the best. You don't want that smoke. smoke. Nothing but videos of the Thunderbird. Thunderbird. And Eric's tongue. The Eric Tongue Cam. What are we at? Five? Six. Six? You gotta tell the people the time too. Where we were fishing for uh, trout and caught Cisco. We'll you saw Cisco here? We'll eat there. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Baby, make the beat go. I like the way your booty goes. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Is that more your jam, Eric? Is that what you listen to? <laughs> going the wrong way. <laughs> Ryan doesn't even wear underwear. <laughs> no songs, it's like don't don't. Great of you. Just look at it. Why okay? do I gotta stay there? I'll go down here. All right, we'll go down there, but then you're not gonna be as high, so it's not as cool. That's way less cool. Me standing down here is like you standing up there. <laughs> Hilarious. Pretty fresh Thundy box here too. Looks like a semi-new build. Maybe a COVID build. New bottom, old top, who knows? Whoever made the lettering for that is a saint. Thanks, mama. Mama. Ooh. Wait, what's my signature move now? Ooh. I didn't mean to make it first. But if I'm not back again this time tomorrow. Eric didn't even, Eric, you even know that song? Uh -huh.